A hello and a warm welcome to the good, the scars and the rugby brought to you by Vodafone, just for you amazing folks here in Gloucester. And if you're standing at the back there, like you're eavesdropping on someone else's 21st, don't be shy. Uh, the people in the front here did buy tickets, but they were a really friendly bunch. So if you just want to pull up a chair and come listen in, we're going to just be chatting about uh, some phenomenal women doing amazing things on the rugby pitch. It would probably be advisable for you to know a few of the in-jokes, but even if you don't, don't be shy. You can laugh along uh, whenever you find anything even remotely funny. And if you would like to sit a little closer because it's awkward at the back there, you with your chin in the air, like you can sit right here. There's some nice grass here as well, even if you can't find a chair. So don't be shy to walk all the way up to the front. We can do a slow clap for you. It's like a wedding. You can come all the way down to the front of the aisle like you're in the retinue. Please don't be shy. There we go. There we go. Pull up a chair. Grab a slice of grass. And then um, welcome. It's great to see all of you guys in real life. Usually when we do the show, it's either in my spare bedroom or in a weird dark room in Vauxhall in London. And it's so nice to just be outside of London for a change and see people in real life. Um, and also ones who probably know and love Mo a lot better than we do. So it's, it's like her extended family here. Um, it's our final show of the season and this is a really special one because all of the um, live events that we've done, we've just done for the people in the room. So we could kind of you know, just have a little internal meeting with everyone in the space and then go on with our lives and there was no record of it. But if tonight you are a world-class member of our wider family, it will be captured on cameras. So I hope uh, you've brushed your hair in the last week or so and you're ready for at least the back of your head to be part of it. But I would love it if you just, you know, if you were really loud and quite all over the place, that would also be great. Brilliant. Okay. Mic check, line test, one, two. We're at Teague's and I've heard about this place from so many people. Uh, it's amazing to experience it and we would just like to thank Teague's for hosting us in the phenomenal way they have, especially for the additional budget that they made available for the good weather that Gloucester has provided uh, and also for the cold refreshments. I hope everyone has their cider. Did you get your cider? There's one of four different ciders. Everyone's got their ciders in the air? Yes. Okay, great. Um, that's good. So now I should probably invite my co-pilot uh, for this very special episode. No one knows when Mo's going to drop in. We're, we're all hold it, holding our breaths. Uh, but you might have uh, seen the woman, the whole thing was built around and conceptualized around. And we do this thing where I shout Emily and then you shout. Scarlet! Emily! Scarlet! Emily! Scarlet! Scazzy, this means you need to come walk. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's give a round of applause for Emily Scarrett. What was producer Shira telling you that was so important? Can't even remember. We were just chatting about if Mo's ever going to turn up and I'll just keep checking my phone just to see if she's dropped a message. It's okay. Producer Shira and I have telepathy. We basically share a brain these days um, and she'll, she'll definitely be able to get through to me if not to you. Um, I can't believe that you're wearing a full suit because it is, even for a South African, it is very hot today. I was going to take it off and I was going to change but I just felt I'd come this far. That it just, it was what it was. It's pretty much stuck to me now. So we're just, we're seeing it through. You I know, are, what a nice visual that is. Yeah. <laughs> but you are impressively, flawlessly powdered because I can't see, like, I mean, you just look so glamorous. <laughs> Everyone wants what to know. What a great question. <laughs> what happened to the leopard print and why were you not rocking it today? Did you see that? Yeah, it just dropped. Put on a little thing. injury weight. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, the leopard print, do you know what? I've washed the leopard print. And it may well come on holiday with me. Oh. I've, I've not binned it off. We, There's we, still hope for the leopard print. We're going to have to launch a range of Emily Scarrett <laughs> leopard print trousers. And uh, we'll donate the proceeds to some sort of worthy cause to make sure that it balances out the ridiculousness of it. Katie Daly McLean is saying she'd like a pair. Uh, I know Yvonne Scarrett, uh, Scouser's mom, said she'd like a pair as well. She was quite keen on it. Um, so, yeah, so we've already got a few buyers. Um, producer Shara is making a note of it on her phone as we speak. 
Um, and everyone here was one of the 9,669 yeah. people there today. Yes? Yeah. How good. How was that for you? Oh, it was amazing. Like We were um, sat up in one of the boxes and at so many points during the... Yeah, sorry. Sorry, the guys. Sorry. Do you know, we needed to watch the TV screen and watch the game. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, like, there's so many points during the second half. Just got goosebumps, like genuine goosebumps. And it, trust me, it was not because I was cold. It was because of everything that was going on, the crowd. Yeah, considering you were wearing a, a suit, yeah. the fact that you were physically able to have goosebumps <laughs> today was a small miracle. And that game genuinely did bring us... Absolutely. Sometimes when you come to a final, like people beforehand, uh, the ones that I polled on the sidewalk um, were shouting out massive scores. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a final, guys. It could be, you know, it could be low scoring. It could be really tight. We had eight tries. Is that what it was? Four so cards good. and <laughs> 53 points. That is a proper, I mean, they really put it on. They rolled it all out. They left it out there for us today. It was so good. Like genuinely, I think when you when you bill a final like that, you want it to be all of those things, don't you? And you hope it will be in the top two teams and the class and the amount of internationals throughout and blah, 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 blah. But sometimes it just never materializes because finals are hard. Um, but I thought today was a genuinely really good game. Ebbed and flowed and it had all the other bits in it. Um, and Gloucester won. And if we're honest, we're all happy about that, Aww. I think, aren't we? <laughs> also, this sun... What is this thing in the sky that is so very hot? What time is it? <laughs> oh my god. Do you want, my <laughs> Do you want to <laughs> just pop those on? Those were my mum's, by the way. Yes. I nicked it off her. Do you not want them? In South Africa. No, I really like them. <laughs> um, so you can only bother, borrow them for, for the moment. I'm all right. Thank you, though. My skin, she's used to much worse. Um, also, sunscreen, guys. Ne? Sunscreen. Um, then, now. before we get into our Gloucester Love Fest, which is obviously what we're here for, can we just quickly have a moment for Susie Appleby and her team who came here and just, on the, on the surface of it in the week, we spoke to Katie Daly-McLean and she, yes, Katie, called Exeter Chiefs for a win to start with. Yeah. Yeah, and then she changed her mind. She's quickly trying to reverse out of that decision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Berth called it for Exeter as well. So she wasn't the only one. There are, there are a few people who looked at the numbers. You crunched all of the stats. They were very impressive this season. And we would like to thank them for bringing it. Oh, massively. I agree. Round of applause for Exeter. I think the thing that they have at their disposal is like so many good players and so many good players that have played together for quite a period of time now, whether that's internationally or obviously down at Exeter. Um, and the physical nature of what they bring and kind of that part of their game is amazing. It's so brutal. I, again, like just being close to the action today, some of the thuds, some of the hits, some of all of that, it was just, it's brutal. Like Alex Matthews, Zoe from Gloucester, et cetera. They're, they're just absolutely whacking people. Um, but extra have played their part. They've, they've had a brilliant season. I think many thought their second final that they'd do it. Um, but again, I, I think it's quite nice that the team that was the most consistent all year won. Gloucester. Gloucester. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> like there's an echo in here. Like there's like a second round of it rolling. Um, you were saying that you were a little nervous. At what point were you nervous watching it for Mo? The whole, the whole game and all week. Um, I called her at the back end of the week. I was just like, how are you feeling? She was like, yeah. Didn't really, she didn't really want to talk about it. She was like, can you make sure that um, if I come up that you tell everyone I've had tonsillitis, tonsillitis all week so that if I don't play that well, everyone knows that I've been ca carrying this illness. And I was like, I'm definitely not going to say that, but... So everybody, Mo had tonsillitis a week. What a trooper, got through it. So, so brave. Um, but yeah, I, I think early on in the second half, um, you just, you know how well Exeter can come back and what they did in the semi-final via Saracens, you know, no mean feat whatsoever. Um, there you go. <laughs> Here we go, some um, due applause for them. So you knew, you knew it was in them. You knew they were capable of it. You knew their fitness levels were through the roof. So it was always edgy until probably... Uh, Lisa Neumann scored that try, if I'm honest. Yeah. And Lisa, brilliant performance. There were so many people today who were 
absolutely phenomenal. Obviously, friend of the pod, someone we met when we came here um, earlier in the season. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's unbelie- am I as shiny as I feel? You were a little shiny. Am I? Now. Am I? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Come on, that cloud. Yeah, we, yeah okay, we would like to apply for some more cloud yes, cover. Come in. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> uh, who impressed you today out there? Clakey George. She was unbelievable. I think Katie finally gave her player of the match. She arguably deserved it last week. I just yeah, the way the way she was able to control the game. Someone's shouting Wales. I think she's got to have an opportunity now internationally, surely. Yeah. Surely. She's been so good. And I, everyone talks about her kicking game, and that's obviously very evident, and it's what we see. But she's also really good at all the other bits as well. Her passing game is very good. And yes, she plays behind a pack that are quite often on the front foot, and obviously it'll be interesting to see if that, that wasn't the case. But she's she's so good, and she's still so young. I think you've got to give her an opportunity. Give her give her a chance and see what happens. But the the whole... Yes. <laughs> I think the whole of the Gloucester pack today were mega. I think, you know, 10 minutes towards the end, there was a little break in play. And you saw Sam Monaghan on her knees, Maud on her knees. So many of the girls are just putting an absolute shift. I saw Zoe Oilcroft at one point put her head down, shake it, look up, and just you could tell she was telling herself, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. But it, it was really tough out there. Just stay it in It was me. hot. It was? It was so hot. <laughs> you would have been in the I was in the shade, don't worry, yeah. <laughs> you were in the box and you were complaining about how hot it was. I would just like to point out that people in the Southern Hemisphere play URC games and, and the Welsh and the Irish and the Italian t- teams who play in the men's URC play in temperatures like this every season, every time they go to Durban, every time they go to Cape Town, every time they go to Joburg or Pretoria. Between November and March, this is what they experience. Stormers. Good on them. Stormers! <laughs> She's <laughs> finally found a friend with that. <laughs> Normally we give her nothing. Yeah, there's a South African in every room in this country, okay? Um, but that is, a, that is a relevant point to make because I would just like to say, can we start a petition for more summer rugby? Like, who didn't like this today? You don't have to play it with is the greatest of respect. <laughs> you don't have to run around in it. Like, I get it. I do get the theory of it. But we're just not used to it. Whatever it is, we just need to be used to it because I think you play a whole season and many people here will play a whole season in the wet, in the rain, in the cold and then all of a sudden it comes to finals time and it's literally like being in Marbella. It's not what we're used to. I feel like I'm in Marbella. I don't know about anyone else. <laughs> You're just missing the bikini, basically. <laughs> okay, so phenomenal performance. Um, thank you so much to Exeter for bringing what they brought and I think for everyone in this season for pushing standards the way they've pushed them. Have you heard they're going back to watch Will Young at Sandy Park? Are you serious? Apparently. Yeah, apparently they, Will Young's playing at Sandy Park tonight and they're, they're going back to watch him. What time is he? What, no how idea. far is that from here? Two hours. Two yeah. hours? A couple hours. And Natalie and Brooklyn. Oh. Torn. Oh. Oh. We're all going. Well, some people, someone at the back apparently, producer Shira has just told me, because we're telepathic like that, that someone said that's depressing. They couldn't do Will Young. It's probably not the up, most after losing, losing type of music you perhaps want to go. Yeah. But I mean, if you were going to cry into your beer, that you would be able to do it to that. <laughs> that would work. We would definitely give you that opportunity. <laughs> oh. I'm going to pink tomorrow, so I'm just going to be like, oh. get the party started on the Saturday night. No, no, just me. Are we going to get Katie Daly McLean to respond to any of the slurs that she's faced tonight? Do you just want to, like, just come sit up here now? We've trolled you literally the whole come time. On. And you haven't gotten oh, angry no, enough. Zero persuasion. Zero persuasion. <laughs> Katie Daly McLean, ladies and gentlemen, I <laughs> say Katie. <laughs> She was absolute class and so polite on the pod. And um, last time we had you on, you were a lot feistier. How, wh- which vers- version of it are we going to get? I thought today? you were never going to ask. First of all, what? been standing in direct line for ten minutes, <laughs> waving at you. Watch it; it sinks a bit. Oh God. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So this guys, like a, health and safety. It's like a pogo stick, right. basically. She's it's only a, got little legs, bless her soul. <laughs> all right. <laughs> And I'm slightly heavier than I used to be, but don't judge me. Right, I mean... It does the ceremonial dip every time you sit down, just to er- emphasise... It's hot here, isn't it? It's, honestly, <laughs> mate, it's boiling. <laughs> we were talking about Clanky George, and I felt a little <clears throat> awkward because you were standing right there and we didn't have a microphone in front of your face. 
Did you just love that performance? Yeah, I mean, Skaz gave me a bit of grief there, didn't you? But probably should have given a player the match in the semi. And then I got a bit frightened that people would judge me because she was a fly half. And I gave, so I gave it to a back row. No offence to Alex. Alex was also great that day, but she was phenomenal today. I think probably for me, the difference, I think a good fly half is sometimes hard to come by. Um, <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. She's going to leave again now. Uh, so and I'm done. Um, no, and I, I, I was, you talked about a kicking game, but just the game management, the ability to see space and execute, and especially in, this is a pressurised game, isn't it? It's a, it's a final, a first final for Gloucester, so a lot of pressure on her shoulders. And yeah, she was, she was phenomenal today. Do you know what I love as well is that she's still bringing the spiral back. I've been on the campaign for a <laughs> yeah. while. Mo also loves it. Elm has no idea what we're talking about, but bringing the spiral yeah. kick back, such a almost or well, arguably lost tool in our game so it is good. isn't it yeah we went very much punting end over end i'd like to see you try actually what the spiral see, no absolutely. actually i've seen you pass maybe not no 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 one should let me should we talk about the pass shara has been threatening me with the release of this uh, footage i don't know if any of you have heard on the pod they've been sitting on this footage of me trying to do rugby things at quinn's <laughs> Skaz, this was the highlight of the last season, I think. It was because, like, you, you're so good at what you do. I'm trying to... Shit, Compliment I'm comes this by is, an insult. How you so, roll a so dog so in glitter. She's literally but, just there's a but to this, ready? Yeah. You're so good at what you do. Yeah. But just the... There it is, but. But. <laughs> just the... I, I couldn't quite believe that what was happening was genuine. You know, like, when you play up to something... And I was like looking at you and I was like, she's not playing up to this. This is a genuine attempt to kick the ball. It's a genuine attempt to make a pass. And it was, well, just thank God you are so good at what you do because... you not a ball sport girl then? No. I played for the 10th and 11th netball team in my school. Okay. I'm really Like as in the 10th and 11th side or like under 10s and 11s? No, no, the uh, I and J team. I don't know. As in A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, H. okay. Got you. Got you. Yeah. And was there any teams below that? No. Yeah. No. So that was the bottom. I was really big on participation. I participated okay. in everything. <laughs> That's good. There's a lot to be said for that. Like, I really don't care whether I'm good at it, but I'm going to give it full go. And today's pass, was that what you were referring yes, to? Yes, yes, today's pass. So today's pass, Elmo was roaming around with one of her Vodafone balls. and she it's tried at to... her feet. Elmo! Oh, is it? Oh, here, yeah. Yeah. here it is. She tried to throw it to me over the banner, right, and it's... So say the throw was five metres, it went approximately two, right? <laughs> so as it hits the floor, I look up at her and I'm like, what was that? She, she's on the tilly slagging me off with her face. <laughs> anyway, as I'm giving Elma grief looking up, this ball rolls and proceeds to meg me. <laughs> I couldn't believe my so eyes. even when I'm terrible, I'm great. <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> Only person ever to meg Emily Scarrett. <laughs> Boom. But wait, there's oh, more. Yeah, she's off. I don't know what's behind it. I, I hope have it's a, an umbrella. I want. have a gift. That, For both of us? That was ordered. No. Um, you're not having Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> have you bought me a fish? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wait, it, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we brought you a Chardonnay with um, a live tail. I don't know why the tail is doing that, but um, you can take her home with you now. <laughs> How very cute. I must, I really appreciate the Chardonnay. Um, I think I know what she is. Go on. So I think she's a butterfly koi carp. Did you look it up? I've been researching it all week. <laughs> Do you not There's have... a lot, if anybody didn't know, a lot of koi carp in the world. <laughs> Lots of different variations. Do you not have three children? Yeah, but when that's, you know, <laughs> they were roaming around busy. eating sticks at the time, they were fine. Oh God, is, there, is there anyone who is looking at the koi carp conversation going, uh, I, uh, huh? Is anyone with me? Does anyone, does, conversation. It, does anyone need to understand what we're talking about? Or are you all okay with this? Okay, we're all good. Everyone's thumbing upping, so we're hundreds. Okay, bro, so... Me, me, hold on. Me, hold I've it? also got a gift for you, Elma. What? Bear with. It's the, end of, it's the end of season party. Obviously, there will be gifts. I didn't bring a gift. Is that a problem? It's okay. okay you cool. are the gift. Uh, thank you, you being here... That keeps on giving. You are the gift that keeps on giving. What? Is she <laughs> digging it out of She's the ground? Oh gosh, that's a Jesus. whole box. It's a big gift. Okay, so this needs a bit, a bit of explanation. <laughs> Ice to the front. Um, <laughs> <laughs> basically, 
basically, Elma obviously is not a native of our country. So whilst she's over here, she has been going on and on and on about the quality of the Royal Mail. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> and the postal service. Now, I have found it hilarious the entire time. I've tried to get it into as many podcast episodes as I possibly can. And Shira, who normally we give so much love to, has continued to edit it out. <laughs> because oh. she just didn't think it's what the people wanted. Anyway. Boo. This week, she kept it in. And the amount of messages we had about, oh, lol, the postal service comment really made me chuckle. <laughs> so Shira's eating her own words. And Elma... <gasps> you can officially become I'm a, pen! a post box. <laughs> put it on, put it on, That's put it on. It's red. Oh. <laughs> and, and it's Vodafone red, guys. <laughs> I'd just like to point Sorry. out, this is my new favorite outfit. I like the fair play. That was it's, good. it's a bit odd, but I think we can do this. Wait, half the skirt has been caught in it. It's got a GSL logo on the front, guys. It's so nice. Do we have our own on brand? Postcode? What is our postcode? But postcode GS. Can be whatever you want it to be. GS one. It'll have GS to be one. GS three four one nine R. That was the score today, by the way. Oh. oh. That was way too fast for the rest of it. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Do I, good. Now, are you, now are you hot? Be honest. It's uh, it's a little hot now. Do I keep it on or do I just can? <laughs> Okay, Sorry. let's see how long I last in this. Yeah, let's see what Mo says when she gets here. She'll get um, absolutely nothing of this reference. Ooh, let's see how I sit on the pogo stick now. Yeah, not there laughing now. I'm on, I'm on. I say Mo, you say Han. Mo, Han. Mo, Han. I say Mo, you say Han. Mo, Han. Our girl has made it. Okay, I need to do a proper Nicole intro to do, introduce you guys to her. I know you don't know me, Nicole. Hi. I'm not, I'm not usually dressed like this, but it's great to have you on the show. It's later. Yeah. It's all right. So Nicole is a bit of a branding mastermind. She's, sink. she's literally had a hand in so many things that you just take for granted in sport. Um, but she is the marketing brain behind... How many views did your team announcement feature get... It's, it's not far 400,000 views now. Yeah. Okay, so by Monday, it'll be half a million views on the Heartbree, the Gloucester men announcing the Gloucester Heartbree yeah. women's liner. Yeah. So Nicole is the brain behind that, that decision, one that I would like to applaud. <laughs> and then Queen's Home and the Red Roses and a variety of other things that you have had a hand in. Yeah. And I just feel you are like the most underrated person in all of rugby. <laughs> well, yes. That's very kind. Louder! <laughs> we have also been trolling you unnecessarily for the media training that you have done. I know, I saw that actually. It's... On our Mo. Yeah, every time you get a, give a good answer, then Skaz goes, oh, Nicole. <laughs> what are you right. going to say? Sorry, Whoops. sorry, but you are a fine one to talk, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a show of hands. Who thinks Skaz is the most media trained out of us both? <laughs> yeah, there we are. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and Welcome, sorry. Mo. I'm, sorry, guys. <laughs> lovely to have you. Sorry, guys. Congratulations. I've had a, I've had a cider and a half, so, you know. <laughs> Can we quickly have a moment for the fact that you're sitting here with that medal around your neck? Woo! <laughs> Very together. Yeah, it's the cider. <laughs> Have you cried? Have, yeah. How yeah. many times? Only twice. <laughs> well, how come there was such a big emotional outpouring after the semi, but not the same after the final? Ooh, very good question. I think um, we genuinely believed it. We knew that obviously Bristol were the team on the up. The, oh, here we go, media trade. Hey! Oh. Good job, Mike. Here we well are. <laughs> No opinions. Yeah, here we said go. Okay. The show. Um, this just... is my genuine thought process, everyone. Okay, maybe I am media trained. Maybe I don't even know it, but this is my thought process. Um, yeah. So, like Bristol, we knew they were the team on the up, and um, <laughs> there it goes. And um, like we knew we had what it took, but obviously it was so hot. Like honestly, the hottest thing ever out there. And when we got through to the final, we like everyone just had full belief. But I think we had to give ourselves the shot to be able to do that and probably why 
it was bigger after the semi than the final because we knew if we got ourselves into it, like unbelievable work from you guys and that happened back in September. So everyone that thinks that Gloucester got the bid like in December or whenever it was announced happened back in September and honestly can't thank the guys at Gloucester Rugby. Nicole was a big part of that um, for getting it there because it was genuinely what dreams are made of. So every one of you that was there and cheering and shed heads, everyone else like honestly meant the world. So thank you. Nicole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Right, and, right. Nicole, can we quickly talk about this whole hosting it at the top ranked finalist side conversation? Because um, Mo and I had that a little earlier. So the the other half of the globe that I come from, this is very normal. The team that qualifies for the final that finished highest ranked, they host the final. It's like that in the URC. It's like that in the Curry Cup. It's like that in Super Rugby and a variety of other things. And surely in the women's game, today it should be proof of the wins that you score when you do this. Yeah, I've, I've heard a few people have that conversation today after, you know, what just under 10,000 people at King's Home is, is, is pretty much what, uh, what dreams are made of. So, yeah, I mean, we would certainly be pro-hosting it again because we fully anticipate that these girls will be back there. Yeah! Um, There's, there's obviously logistical challenges with finding out when the final venue is and, and sort of turning a game around in time. Here we but, go, media. But <laughs> it's very much doable. And of course, we, we would be uh, very keen to do that. Um, can we quickly rewind to the fact that England's women's team were not called the Red Roses always? Nope. This is, a, this is something that you had a hand in. I was part of a team of people that had a hand in that, um, as everything that has happened at Gloucester in the last week, whether it be Queen's Home or the team announcement, we've just got brilliant people around us. But yes, uh, the Red she Roses. It was a very, very large part <laughs> of us now becoming the Red Roses. And you know what? I think at the time, we nervous that have that kind of head on our shoulders, probably really understood it. But now everybody and all the young girls that I want to be a Red Rose, not I want to play rugby for England I want to be a red rose and it's such an important thing that as I say we didn't understand at the time but now we're really starting to get how big a thing that was I so thank you very much it's oh. more than well, but I, I think, think also it was sorry it was a soft stuff that you guys got right as well like being part of 2017 there was little bits of pictures and and things that made us made you belong and I think sometimes you think playing for your country that naturally happens and that you just you're part of something bigger but these guys were so so good at put, bringing that to life for us and, and making you feel different and making you feel special in a sport that naturally does some of it, but getting the small deals right were, were really important as well. I feel like I'm on This Is My Life, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. You know, like those friends that you have that hate compliments. Yeah, yeah I mean, no, no one hunt. loves that. I think that just on, on the Red Roses thing, because genuinely there were a team of brilliant people behind it, the reason that came to fruition is because you know, the squad identified that they kind of felt like they were missing an identity. It was like, were they England women? Were they England? It was England men. And it felt like they needed something for everyone to really identify them by. And that's ultimately where Red Roses came from. And it's just gone on to be this phenomenal thing. Yeah, because New Zealand does this very well. So their men's basketball team is called the Tall Blacks. Do you know this? <laughs> <laughs> Front row loved that. Yeah. <laughs> The tall blacks and the silver ferns and the black ferns and the, the black sticks. The black sticks. I mean, they've, they've just got brand names for everything. Um, Queen's Home, whose idea was that first? Because Sarah Orchard has claimed this on a WhatsApp group that I'm on. So it, it actually wasn't. It, it wasn't her, um, although she's obviously brilliant. It, it may have well been someone here. So after the Red Roses game that we hosted at, at King's Home last season uh, against Wales, Myself and Katie, who works in my team, we'd noticed that someone had commented on a, a, a fan had commented Queen's Home and a heart emoji. And we thought, damn, we should have, we should have done that because it was great. So when we knew that we were fortunate enough to get the final and then particularly when Gloucester Hartbury were going to be there, we just, it, it felt like the stars were aligned and we got our branding guy up on the side of the stadium and he did his, he did his magic. And I told Mo before, I let her know just in case she hated it. Um, and thankfully she didn't. You didn't, you didn't mind. No, we loved it. Basically, anything that comes through me. So Nicole quite often will like, ask a question. Kim's in the house. Um, she'll quite often ask a question, um, but I'll always go, so what do you think? Like, She's a bit of a sense check, and if we're both happy, then we roll with it. But so it was like, I love it. Love I it. love it. Like She really overpronounces, and it was everything. So yeah, we loved it. Although we did train there. I haven't said this to you. We did train there on Monday night like in the barn bit, like just down the road. And as we came out of the, the barn, the loads of the girls came through and like looked up and they were like, 
Have they taken it down already? Because there's two bits that say King's Home, but it's the bit on the side, like by the road. The really the important one. It was, yeah, yeah, the most important thing, and it was just class. I can't believe no one stood up and claimed that, even if it wasn't them. <laughs> yeah. That was it. You've missed a vital is opportunity. There, is the person Kim who Oliver has. Kim Oliver, of course. Kim yeah. Oliver, yeah, she's definitely the person who came up with this. <laughs> oh, she, uh, she's there with the Scarrett family. She's just uh, adopting your parents. <laughs> and she, she does, does that often. It's very, very scary. <laughs> Okay, um, Mo, we need to talk about the decision that you guys took this week to not earn any match fees today. So what? Go on. If Lionel Messi goes, I don't need my match fee for the final, we all go. But you guys taking this decision, that is a big move to make. Talk to me about why and where that came from. Um, for anyone that hasn't seen it, there's a video that's gone out, obviously MND um, Awareness Week. Uh, Global Day. MND Awareness Day. Yeah. A- awareness Day. Um, and like anyone that hasn't seen that video, like I urge you to go and watch it. So obviously Ed Slater, massive part of the club. I think he had a year left on his contract before, obviously, the, dis- the um, diagnosis came in and it's so touching. Like we... My heart goes out to him, obviously, with two small kids. They love it. Like, they, they come to watch all our games. He was there at the semi-final. Um, he's actually at a wedding today. And his yeah, his kids were here with their grandparents because that's how much they care about it. So we watched the video. Um, our soon-to-be manager, Catherine Buggy, I think she was 18 today. Um, she came into the office. Obviously, I work at Hartbury as well, so I was just sat there. She came into the office. She was like, mate, like, I've just had this idea. Like, I just think... We should donate our match fees and myself and my physio who basically morgan knew she like runs the show behind the scenes she's amazing um but yeah she was like we would just talk to out i was like mate that's an unbelievable idea obviously there's a lot of different financial situations within our squad um so we put it on the whatsapp group just made sure everyone was happy and everyone jumped at the chance and i think the impact that it's had like obviously it's, it's not mind-blowing, is it? But it's the gesture, and that's the most important thing. And anything we can do, like we wanted to do the cycle that the boys did, but we just haven't had chance because for those that don't know, our season's a 50-long week season, so it's actually ridiculous. So all of us just now need a bit of a break, but we wanted to do something. We wanted to have maximum impact. Um, off the back of watching that video, I think it's just something that was a, a no-brainer for us. And it, like we care so much about the club. We care so much about him. He cares so much about us, and anything we can do, like whatever small it is, I think um, it was, yeah, very important. I have a family member who was diagnosed with MND recently and it's just brought the whole fundraising project of it home in such a very real way. So thank you. Like, it just has to be the cruelest thing. Like, the... Especially, like, imagine being a professional athlete and then just... The deterioration and even now like honestly i'll well up if i talk about it too much like we had lewis come in to do our shirts and he knew that there was a video coming from ed and he had to leave the room like he got so choked up about it and i can completely understand why it's just the cruelest thing like not only for him and how his body's changing if you haven't seen the video obviously he says um every month is like a year's gone past so each each month it's like another year and the deterioration from when he did the bike ride to, to now is is quite eye-opening to be honest with you and uh, it's just brutal so anything anything you can do any thing we can do like we want to get behind it because it's not just him obviously his wife his two kids his whole family like the boys you saw the impact that it had even on lewis and you see nicole tearing up a little bit next to me now this is also the significance of sport is the fact that it's about winning but there is just so much more you can achieve in the process and the change that you guys are so intent on making in your community, but also in the impact you have on causes like this one, when you talk about it, when you use the opportunity like you are doing today, when it's really your moment in the sun, you talk about a 50 week long season. (laughs) At the start of the season, when we were cooking out in the countryside. I was crying. And you were crying. (laughs) That feels like a universe away from where we are now. Yeah, how do you even answer that? No, it really is. I think um, I said it, I think it was to you on the pitch, but um, when everyone has those moments, right, when you're like rock bottom, when you're 
you don't know what's going on. You can't like get yourself out of it. You don't know what's happened, and you got two options. You either keep spiraling, or you find the light in whatever you can do. And to me, like I've said it so many times, but these girls were my light. Like obviously, family as well. Like that's not that's obviously you don't even need to say that. You know how much I love my family. See my auntie right there. But um, yeah, the like the fight that I wanted to give. Like the girls just surrounding me, they were unbelievable. Like the the rugby community, everyone about that place, like Gloucester Rugby. Then you see it from another level in terms of, obviously the game gets put on there, all of you lot coming into support. So just everything about this sport is phenomenal and I absolutely love it. And I think whenever you hit those dark times, like there's always a way out, there's always someone or something that can give you that like light and get you out of that place. So just keep fighting. Cause you never know, you might be sat here with a winner's medal. <laughs> Sometimes I'm sentimental and sometimes I just want to have fun, so you're never fun, quite sure. No, fun, no, fun, fun, no, fun, no, fun, no, fun, no, fun. Please, everyone, put away the chairs. Like, we don't need any more chairs broken. Just yet. I'm, I'm never allowed to do that again. Never? To be fair, we just want to find one. So if someone give me your chair, I'll show you the trick. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I got you, my boots on. I was going to say, you're still in... Like, you have not. Alex Good is my inspiration. <laughs> right. this, hang on, though, hang on. Can we talk about your earrings? Because did you play in them? No, I didn't, but we thought... A little bit of glam. Oh, okay, okay, cool. A cool. <laughs> little bit of glam. Bracelet, rings, earrings, but we're still in the same shirt. Oh, Zoe did it as well. So Zoe is exactly the same. We're going out in Gloucester like this, basically, guys. With and maybe tomorrow, we don't know yet. We'll see. With your pearls. Yeah, with my little pearls. Yeah, and, and you will be reachable this time. All of, all of your messages won't delete. Exactly. Yeah, priorities. Not priorities. turning it off. Um, Nicole, uh, what is next for you now that you've renamed King's Home and you came up with the Red Roses? Like, is there anything else on your to-do list that we could help you, like, fix in the world? Oh, God. Um, I, I, I don't really know how to answer that. What did you say? President. president. Yeah, I president? don't think I'm trying to be president. Would you like to be the Prime Minister? Um, no, I think I'm good for that. Okay, we don't have a president, yeah. mate. Like, well, we try them. I mean, my country has presidents, <laughs> but you, you could have a Prime Minister. No, that, that sounds like an awful job. Um... No, I, honestly, I, it, it, it sounds super cheesy, but I've been at Gloucester for about 14 months now and this was really my first full season and I just think the potential with this club, both men and women, is phenomenal. You know, both the men and the women's teams, the attitude of all the players, of, of just a brilliant team around me. I kind of feel like this club could could take some titles elsewhere a few more times and I'm, I'm really excited to be part of that. So yeah! we'll, we'll, we'll stick with Gloucester. Wow, and can we have a moment for the fact that the men's team were here in support today as well? We've been asking for allyship in the women's game for such a long time. And I just love that your fans on the pitch standing there clapping you when you did your little laugh. Oh, so cool. Do you know what? The, um, when Exeter scored first half under the sticks, I was given the girls a right talking to. Because I don't, I don't think we deserve to be in the lead, to be honest with you. Like, uh, those first few minutes I was like we don't fucking deserve this like that is Especially exactly... when you dropped it. Oh my god. Are we, we talking about that? The issue is... No, 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 we can talk about that. We can talk no? about that. Okay. Yeah, no, we okay. can talk about that. There we go. Okay. I, the Very thing cool. is I dropped it then Mia dropped it and we still got to the edge so I was like... You were over the line though. The space Mia was in the open play. Yeah, bad. I was really upset about that one. I know, you could see yeah. it on TV. Really sad. <laughs> Your face kind of said it. Did, you, did you do the classic? Uh, she'll be, be really, really disappointed, disappointed in that one. <laughs> Literally. I was like, in no one knows, she'll be really disappointed with herself. And then you were like, on screen. I was like, oh God. She was really disappointed. Um, but yeah, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Sorry. so they, they just scored and I was like, the way we're playing, we don't deserve to be in the lead. Like, like tuck it up, like fucking get out of your, whatever. I don't know what I said. Sorry, I just swore. There it yeah. is. Just so you know, Rafi and Lily here are nine and 11. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we'll hug after. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you You've never heard that word in. before. Yeah. That's something to let me know on the way in. <laughs> I'm looking at you, producer Shira. Um, yeah, sorry. So, very PC language under the sticks. Like, had a bit of a rant. Um, what was even my you point? Mean, the boys. Speaks to me the boys. Oh, the boys. and then literally, I just clocked <laughs> eyes and all the boys are like stood over the thing, like looking down at me. And I was like, oh my God, I'm embarrassed now because they would have heard everything. But no, they're class. They're amazing. Um, they really care about it. Uh, you can see that everything that um, happened and yeah, buzzing. Can I show you what Rafi and Lily gave me today? And then I had a little cry. Are you the two that listen 
Yeah. At bedtime, amazing. I forgot your names before, and now you're here. That's class. It says Alma is in town. Make sure to smile at her. <laughs> and then there's messages in here, and I think what is a microphone, right? That is a yes, it is a microphone. It's so nice. Um, I've, got, I've got one as well. My mum's got it. I gave it to her to look after oh, safely. Thank you, girls. Yes, thank you so thank much. It's so okay. sweet. So, um, do I have a card? Or <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. You gave it me on the way in. Good one, oh. Mo. Good one, Mo. Good one. Boo. No, guys, don't boo me. Wow. Um, I read that. I literally went back in from warm-up, sat in my little space and read it. Thank you so much. <laughs> He's digging. You're digging, Mo. No, put your shovel It's away. in my bag. It's in my bag. Do you know what? I'll put it on Instagram later. Maybe not later. Tomorrow. <laughs> not maybe, tomorrow. Maybe Tuesday. Yeah, I was going to say, wait until Wednesday before you get upset. Okay, guys, we have to let Mo and Nicole go. Let, when I say Woo. Mo, you say Han. Mo! Han! Mo! Han! I said a boom, boom, boom. Let me hear you say well. Hey, oh. I said a boom, boom, boom. She's giving Rafi and Lily a hug. If you're listening to this, it's very nice. Such a touching. Now they are taking a selfie. They, yes, 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 you can sit here next to me. Um, Scuzzy's moving in closer. Me again here. I was in the shade. And the sun keeps coming out every time you move. Oh, that was really nice. whispering to each other here we were whispering we just cooled off and now we're in the direct sunlight <laughs> and now the sun has come out in full force and um, has mo's mum arrived yet i have literally been searching for sally all freaking day i was in a lounge is maud here maud's Maudie? here i see maudie maudie i don't have sushi but don't you want to come sit and just chat to us just for a little bit oh she's taking very many selfies up there she was saying, I asked her afterwards, I said, what is it you would like? She, she, I said, how do you feel? And she said, very hungry. And then uh, I said, what it is. She said she was going to give us a big catwalk down the middle earlier. Give us a catwalk! Maud Mayo! Oh, she's got clean hair. She's changed. Well, no sweating. Is this your party outfit? Are you ready to do some crowd surfing tonight? Crowd yeah. surfing? Yes? Okay. Pogo stick. I know, it's challenging. Oh, put on the glasses. Yes, please. She has red sunnies that say champs. Sorry. Sam Monaghan incoming. Let's hear it for Sam Monaghan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sam, please don't step on Chardonnay the fish. She's new. I need twists. Welcome, Sam. We haven't had you on the show. We've had more. Oh, that sun. Yeah, the sun is real. You guys are all like. Sam's Irish, so she'll really feel this as yeah. well. <laughs> She's very vampire like. Ooh, the sun. Ooh. Ouchies. But I am quite pale. Look at this. Stop trying Ooh. to give that hat away. <laughs> <laughs> I need shades. Do you want the hat? You can, hat. You can no, hand my shades out to her. Or do you want the champ shades? Fish. Can't see anyway. <laughs> to the fish? Fish, no. Okay. Sam Monaghan, welcome to the show. This Thank is your you. first time on here. Yeah, it is. Buzzing. Buzzing? Yeah, very buzzing. You look so chilled for someone who has just won. A well, massive. I think I've just necked about seven points in the <laughs> changing room, not gonna lie. Yay! <laughs> Who's gonna go the hardest at it tonight? Uh, Mo and Zoe, for sure. Yay! Mo and Zoe, <laughs> what a combo. No breaking of plates, please. Well, I mean, not expensive ones anyway. Not in their house, because Maud's are all homemade. They are homemade. Because these guys live together, and they're oh, yes. Maud is pottery queen. Yeah, can you... Um... <laughs> I have, do you actually want to come and break I have, all of them? Because I have an apology to make. Happy. In a different show that I did, I was someone was asking me about Maud. Was describing her as obviously a phenomenal individual. We were talking about the pottery, and I said, "Yeah, you walk into their house, and it's those sorts of cupboards that you open, and nothing matches." And Sam messaged me, no, I was like, you said, "Excuse me, oh, you that's said, my kitchen cupboard you're talking about." Hello. No, you said it's that type of house you walk into, and nothing oh, matches. I? And I was like, "Oh." <gasps> 
Ooh. I've spent so long decorating that house. <laughs> no, the house is lovely. You need just to come the see the bathroom. Covered. Just Sorry. got it done. We, we've seen the inside of the house on the pod a few times and it looks lovely. It is nice. And I have the best housemates in the world. Aww. She decorates, I mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> she spills so much, honestly. But I love her I for I do it. clean up. You do. And you need to put the talking stick in front of your mouth. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Tell us about the whole atmosphere. Have you had sushi yet? You told me afterwards you were hungry. Are you still hungry? Have you not eaten? No, I had some meat. You had some meat. Okay, that's good. Indiscriminate. She doesn't care what kind of meat it is. As long as she's eaten, she's good. They did give us like... Battered... Oh, sorry. They gave us battered covered (laughs) mushrooms. Who gives us that? Mushroom. Like, I thought it was chicken. I bit into it and it was mushroom. You wouldn't give your grandmother that. I wouldn't even give my grandmother that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Um, you guys are constantly barbecuing together and then there's like 35 people in your back garden. <laughs> how do you do this? Can I get tips? I need advice for how to entertain that many people. To be fair, everyone gives a hand. Like, we all share the load and we share it between houses, but it's just so special, isn't it? Even the atmosphere after the semi, like, Mo just made sure everyone came back to the house and we all, like, connected and stuff, and I thought that was really special, and I think that's why we have such a good bond on the pitch, like, it translates to out there. I think that's so obvious from you guys, though, because when we were here at the start of the season, it was like that. This mm-hmm. isn't something that's happened in the last two weeks that you've kind of just come together now. It's yeah. been like that for a while. And a lot of other teams are going to look at you guys and go, ooh, how do we do that? Because they just have such a good culture. Is there anything that, like, any tips, any advice, anything that you could... Is it just it's about the people. Great combination yeah. of people. Mm. You can't force anything. It's got to be organic, isn't it, Maudie? It is organic. It's natural. Organic. natural. It's got to be real. And you probably yeah. need a slice of mo in the middle of all of it. Yeah. yeah. I think she has embedded a lot of it, and like Zoe as well, but... Like, there's so many girls, like Rachel Lund, Rani, like, when I first, because I think a lot of the internationals were away, like, the first training session I did, I ended up doing a 1200, and I was like, what? They were like, yeah, we're doing a 1200 tonight, and I was like, okay, let me in. What is a 1200 for those who don't know like me? It's like a a fitness test, so you basically just run 12 pitch lengths as fast as you possibly can. Worst day of the year. It was brutal. It's it's really dull. Just, I knew from that second it clicked, like, the girls were just cheering each other on, and, like, afterwards, like, there was just, it was just so positive, and I just knew that's where I needed to be. You know, well, after 1200, season. you decided yeah. that was the club for you. Yeah, you were like, that was minging, but I want more. This is, yeah, yeah. there's a lot about you. It does, yeah. <laughs> I'll run it now. Can we, can we discuss <laughs> how, how hard today was? Because oh. at, there was a, a couple of points where I looked onto the pitch, not just yourself, but yourself, Zoe, some of the girls that had gone through the, the most graft in that heartbeat. Do you want me to squad. reenact it? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, I was convinced Zoe was retching. Yeah, she it probably was. was. But it's just Honestly, the heat, the intensity. We get into the that. line out, and she'd be like, "Right, girls," and like we were just all on her every word. But like we were all blowing, like we were all on our hands and knees, and we just we knew we had to get the job done. Yeah. But it was tough at times it was the cramp i've never yeah. got i've literally never got cramp Where's before the pickle juice yeah <laughs> and then they've brought on vinegar and i was like oh no that was a pickle vile. juice oh i thought vinegar <laughs> oh. the, the two things taste similar ah, yeah, yeah that was the pickle juice oh yeah it wasn't did nice. you swallow it no but okay. i did i get out there but we talked about pickle juice all week. We were like, right, just spit it out, that's fine. And then we came and there was no pickle juice and everyone's, but I was stressed and I was like, where's the pickle juice? And then we got it in the next break, didn't we? So we were fine. Pickle juice, for anyone who doesn't understand, is supposed to help slash cure cramp. I am not convinced, if I'm completely honest with you. I think it just tastes rank. Did it? Yeah. No, oh, it me shock, on. there is a scientific fact. It like shocks your system, doesn't it? The way it works is it shocks you, gets rid of the cramp. You spit it out, but I heard they replaced your pickle juice for vinegar today. <laughs> <laughs> like genuinely, they ran out of pickle juice, and somebody was looking for vinegar. True fact. Really? It was like vinegar. vinegar. It was vinegar. You were right. They gave me vinegar. Deep intel. Look at you. Are you sure you're not in like the structures of this club? No, just Ooh. you know. Listen. Ooh, Ooh. You, you've got some deep intel for someone who's coaching. Oh, I just make it up. Who knows? Somewhere else. <laughs> Last okay. question. Yeah. How did Chardonnay get her name? Him? Chardonnay. Her? I was... Here she is. I don't know. How did she get her name? Because exactly like you said, she had that flippy finish. That, ooh, she, she looks was like a Chardonnay. Fish. She was a loose fish. She was fancy fish. She was loose, yeah. Came out when she wanted, went yeah. away when she wanted. Chardonnay, Anna. What was his wife called? Chardonnay. What's that? 
I don't know if that... W- I don't think that was something that I watched. Oh, like Love Island, one of them ridiculous things that UK Mo used to watch. It would be a weird reference for you to yeah, have. Yeah, it doesn't sound like me. No. That's no. Wh- that's why I found the whole business Fancy. so incredibly strange. Honestly, she loved that fish. Loved. Loved. More than Mo. She loved that fish more than Mo. Wow. Yeah, that's big, guys. That is very <laughs> That deep. is big. If she had to save the fish or Mo, Ooh. she would have saved the fish. Oh. And, she, and you know what? The dead giveaway, she's not denying it. <laughs> dead giveaway, she's just yeah. sitting there going... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm, true. Mm-hmm. Long blink. Pause. Um, speaking of people who uh, love one another, I caught up with Laura Bimba Delgado after the game, and Morty's smiling already, because you guys are just such a formidable combo. Oh, I love Bimba. She's just great. Sorry. Um... Mo has now hijacked. She, you know, no one oh, else can hear you. On. You are only speaking to me. All of them are looking at you. Going, she just shout in your ear. She's, she's literally just shouted. I'm dead now on this side, by the way. I'm wearing an earpiece, girl. You're not on the PA. Um, would you like to come back up here? Don't be shy. We did come to get her, but now we're up here. She <laughs> wants to leave, but she needs Sam and Maud in order to do so. Is, is that the bottom line? Okay, okay, the so boss I can't, has spoken. we can't talk about loving to sc- the scrum. We love a scrum. We love We a love scrum. Bimba. We love Kelsey. We love a front row. Okay. Done. We love everyone. <laughs> we do love everyone. Okay, mic drop. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gloucester Hartbury girls need to leave the building. So let's give them a great big round of applause. Maud Mia and Sam Monaghan, thank, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. The 2023 champions, they just had those t-shirts printed in the last hour. They didn't have them ready beforehand at all. They didn't come here with them, ready? Can we do our award show? Shall we hand out some awards? Are you ready for this? Kate, Katie wasn't even meant to be on the show, but I reckon you can come up with something. Yeah, well... But I yeah, mean, I'm ready, I'm the ready. Ka- the Katie Daily McLean episode... Might have to my phone, though. ...has to be right up there. Oh, did you make notes in preparation for this? How very un-Emily of you. It was only because I was thinking about it on the drive down. And if I'm honest, I don't want to jump ahead, but I was trying to remember all the ridiculous made-up words Mo said, so I tried to write <gasps> some of them down. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Did you make notes? Yeah. Okay. I love a made-up word, though. There's yeah. a lot of time for that. I came prepared with um, with What are you getting out? Okay. Um, Emily Scarrett. Tat's mum's here. Tracy's here. Tracy's here. If you Tracy, want a mum. congratulations on your daughter's amazing performance. Yay! Well done. Oh. Okay. The Good, the Scars, and the Rugby 2023 review is now in session. Will all attendees please pay attention? Yes, that means the two of you up front here. Favourite moment on the pitch over the last season? Off the top of your head, is there anything that comes to mind? All the way from the Rugby World Cup 2021 tournament to now. I know it feels like four years have passed, literally, between now and October, but... Um, I've got to say, World Cup, that weather, that you guys, England played Australia. That was your favourite moment. No, but I just think it's, you know, when you talk about, like, the difference in our climate, you've gone from literally playing in what was torrential downpour to the beautifulest 40 degree heat. And It's I not 40, it. I can tell you what 40 feels <laughs> no? like. Helmet, it's 40 degrees, can you just accept Look at it? it it's 30, okay? 39. <laughs> Three zero. Okay, favourite moment on the pitch, Emily Scarry? I think it's got to be Sarah Hunter's farewell. It's got to be, isn't it? Good one. Thank Real you. Real good one. Appreciate that. That's a really good award moment. Cling, 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 cling. Where is she? Where is she? Do you know where Sarah Hunter is? She's in Los LA, Angeles. Yeah. In Los I Angeles. Know. Yeah, she's been a big dog at the World Rugby Conference or something. Of course yeah. she's being a big dog. That's what she, I mean, what she does. completely she what she does. Um, off the pitch, favourite moment of the season? Off the pitch, I think uh, Red Roses at Twickenham. Boom. Yes! Was that on the pitch? No, it was off the no, pitch. It's the, the crowd. stuff around it. The sugar yes. babes. The sugar yeah, babes. The you guys doing a Your show. Mom, the highlight was the sugar babes. No, it wasn't the sugar babes. The highlight was the show, obviously. Obviously. But no, like the atmosphere, those of you that were at Twickenham, the amount of families, the feel around the Red Roses game, that for me just shows how far our game has come. And Jill Burns and her speech and the names going up on the wall and everything yeah. that that moment encompassed was just unbeatable. Yeah, I've played in Red Roses games where you could have walked through Tick- Twickenham and nobody knew a Red Roses game was happening, whereas you couldn't get through Twickenham because there's so many people there that had come for a standalone game. 
that for me is it's groundbreaking to see how far the game's come. So it doesn't surprise me how amazing today was received. Preach. Preach. Can I agree with that one? I think it is a pretty unbeatable moment. It, yeah. Incredible. And that I mean I get an award. I get a medal. There we go. You get a medal. <laughs> she doesn't get the medal. Well, you can... Uh, Thank you. Know you. Get a good answer and you get a medal. No, don't There's give her one for free. For you as don't well. just give her one. I'm going to fall off the seat before she gets it. Put that down. You don't deserve it. <laughs> You've dropped your thing. Oh, it's okay. Where's the scarret hat? The scarret... She's, She's bloody brought... framed that thing. It's at home. That's because I love you so much. <laughs> um, next up, favourite guest. You can't say Katie Daly McLean because she's sitting right here. So you we have what? to go wider. I was thinking about this on the drive down because I genuinely think we've had some unbelievable guests this season. I'm super grateful. Obviously, KDM. Um, Sons, being able to share in that retirement so, moment with her. Jodie, I thought, was brilliant. That was my favourite, Jodie Owensley. She was very, that is very That's flipping brilliant. cool, isn't it? Yeah, uh, the crowd say Jodie. We'll say Jodie. But I, I do think we've had so some really, really good ones and just someone it's been fun. Someone shouted Dave Ward at the back there. You only Dave. named two. Dave and his three minutes on the show. That's all you can remember. Great. Guys can only yeah. remember Abby two Ward guests. Ward was very good. Oh. Lenny was good. Linny was good. Oh. Daisy good was okay, good. Okay, okay, well Thank done. You. Well done. And, and I know Skazzy's not going to say this because she wasn't there for it, but having the Welsh girls, Fionn Lewis and her foghorn moment. <laughs> Very good. Honestly, just the variety and the class and the passion and the determination from those Welsh girls and being able to get a full tour of that space that they now train at. The access that we got, thanks to Vodafone's relationship with them, was just absolutely unbeatable. And really interesting for me, just as an outsider, to compare and contrast. Um, Can I um, just double up on my... Uh connection of the week from last week Ooh. and say the bit where we went to Westbury I know you didn't join us but when we did some stuff down there with Vodafone oh. at Westbury and the little kids that I know the video has gone out this week it yeah. was adorable it was so cute when the girl says I'm not cute I'm a demon yeah. <laughs> oh yeah yes girl you are so good. so good unbeatable and you were very good teacher scars such good value thrived didn't you in that environment with the see that try we scored honestly oh. Honestly, try, so good. Try the Favorite show? Today. Yeah. Today, someone <laughs> shouts. That's a really good one. Oh yeah, the Honda. We haven't even spoken about that. Have we? Yeah, I mean, you guys driving. I think genuinely, I've really enjoyed loads of them. I thought the, the Sarah Hunter one was very good because it was just like KDMs, just three friends hanging out, loads of blasts. Stop. But. We enough here, Sarah, I enough need Sarah to keep Hunter. talking about it. Oh, Angie. Um, but I genuinely think our one pre the France game, the crunchy brunch. Oh. Crunch avec Le brunch. crunch avec brunch. Like that was, like we've never done anything, well, arguably not that big before. Yeah. And it was just, I think the whole day, as Katie's already alluded to, but just being a little part of that to start with, seeing the people outside, queuing up, just the, the whole thing was, was pretty cool. The hats with your face on it. Yay. Yay. Love Yay. a little party hat. Um, f and then you? For me, it was probably the best show was our first episode. Oh. Refresh me. Oh, the baking. Mo. Yeah. Very good. We haven't done anything like that episode ever on the show. We had been doing the show for t two seasons. And when we parked outside, you and Mo saw each other for the first time since the World Cup. And they oh. had a little moment in when we parked our cars, and they were like, hi. Big cuddle. A little cuddle. <laughs> and then we had so much fun, and I was being trademark clueless with the baking thing, and Scazzy was killing it. Um, and then Mo just brought her entire very authentic experience to the conversation in a way that is so relatable and very, very brave. Um, and she has just been an absolute, the find of the season. We got an award for that. I feel like she should get all of these. <laughs> but I mean, she has a nicer medal than any of these medals that you I can. have. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say we could chuck all of these medals together and just give them to her. We should have. Um, funniest moment. And there has oh, been a few. This is where I need to get my phone out. There has been. I mean, we have a short list of them. One of the most aghast moments, WTAF moments, was uh, Lenny telling us about their ears. What the fuck? The, was Amy? Actual. 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 <laughs> Even I knew that. Auntie Skaz, she's also here, guys. It's <laughs> nice to have her. 
Okay, tell us your notes. Keep I know, in my defense, I've picked up on a lot of them, but then you okay, add letters. Muriel. Okay, cool, cool. Okay. Okay. So some of my favorite things are basically all centered around Mo's words. Mm-hmm. Um whose number is that? Oh, so it's mine. I actually text it to myself. Oh. <laughs> you know your phone has a notes app. So, no, in my defense, I was driving, so uh -huh. I was speaking to my phone, and you know you can speak a message. And then, it, and then I thought, I'll send it to myself, and then I know where it is. Because I don't think you can speak a note, can you? Yeah. You can? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All part of the education. <laughs> anyway, I've texted myself. We would like to thank Vodafone for <laughs> Emily Scarrett's uh, phone ball and everything else that they take care of here on the show. So proud. <laughs> Which is why... Well, anyway, doesn't matter. It's a few spelling mistakes. Um, so Mo trying to claim that um, Gravitas was <laughs> onomatopoeic. That was funny. That was very that funny. That is world class, yes. Muriel. Muriel. Was very much a highlight. Brilliant highlight. Um, the Toodle Pip and Cheerio made me smile a lot. Mum's actually here. Cheerio, mother. Cheerio. Cheerio. Mom. Cheerio. Toodle Pip. <laughs> oh, no, she thinks I'm sending her home. <laughs> no, no, no. So he's been back an eyelid. It's just so normal in our house. Don't leave. <laughs> We're just making fun of Emily's vocabulary. And then obviously, and I don't even know which word's right anymore because I'm so confused by the whole scenario. Monumentous. Yes. Monumentous. So momentous is a word. And monumental. And monument is a word and monumental is also a word. Monumentous, yeah. however, guys, Lily and like Rafi, you. it is not a word. Auntie Mo has just made them up. But yeah. She smushed them together. But, but some like, of my funniest moments were centered around that. Yeah. It's, it's like how we made Santa small. up. We made up another word called monumentus. Yep. A-S. What about you? Uh, monumentus definitely has to be right up there. Her not knowing the Chardonnay was a wine reference when I said <laughs> Merlot <laughs> has to certainly be one of the other ones. Um, and then Holly Davidson dropping out of our oh, interview yes. with her. All of us just burst out laughing because we went, where did she just go? She just went, perfect. Poof. So funny. So good. It was just really brilliant, the season, to get so many different women with so many different journeys um, talking about the stuff that they've gone through and the adventures they've had through the sport of rugby. And we genuinely wouldn't be able to do any of this work. And I have to really point this out without Vodafone because all of the people you see here, all of the cameras, all of the equipment, the freaking medals, Chardonnay, Scazzy's the post box, bill, the post box, you know, all of these things are equipment that we get to buy because we have people standing behind us saying, here is a license to have some fun and to tell some great stories and to celebrate some amazing individuals in the sport. And I'm just on that though. Can I just say, and I promise they haven't paid me to say that, but the passion that you guys show from yourself, Elma, Skazi, Mo, Shire, that's what makes this so special. Like I've been fortunate enough to be friends with Skazi, so I just get to tag along. But I think what you guys don't give yourself cred enough credit for is the pla what you've created, the brand of here that's got all these people to come into this show and to all the other shows you've done because of how passionate you guys are about the game. And I think ultimately that's what's going to grow us. Bill's in the post. I get it now. I want to be in a team with you. We should, we should get KDM on more often, hey? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But Vodafone's passion for really building high performance spaces wherever they're involved. Are you okay? High Sorry, performance athlete, right 180 there. 180 moment then. On the pogo stick. And enhancing player welfare and really building the passion of the fans, giving people really, I almost want to say like handles to hold on to, reasons to care and support and be invested and interested. DMP and the support that they gave, as soon as that DMP story came out and the fact that they needed funding in order to keep participating this season. Having gone to Darlington, I cannot tell you what a difference the season has made, not only to those girls, but to the people who've been supporting Northern Rugby. And then Wales and the way that those girls have come on, at least over the last season, but I'm so excited for where they're going to go over the next two seasons. Um, he sits quietly in the back row, but I want us to celebrate Mark Huckabee, who's sitting over there with the blue t-shirt on and the blue glasses. Because he's the person who picked up the phone when he, he saw the DMP you story. Right now. Yeah, he's I know, he's you. <laughs> but to Mark and to Amy Smith and the ambition and the dedication and the passion that they show on a daily basis for this and so many other ways in which they're involved in the women's space, bravo. 
100%. Thank you very, very much. And then there are so many other bigger things on the horizon. We would thank you. We would like to thank you, KDM, for just being our honorary additional member of the team. Thank you. We'll just have you whenever. Oh, thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure. She should become part of us, shouldn't she? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just got a sticker. I was going to say you have the sticker now, so you have no say in the matter. We'll we are just Northern correspondent. A bit yeah. like how Lenny's our French correspondent. Yeah. Yes. Um, Scazzy for letting us just, you know, slap scars all over all kinds of things that we can. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, we have it on a piece of... She made a board, um, mate. It's okay. It's, it's on the banner. Do you know this banner has gone all over the place with us? We drag it on the trains all over this country. Um, and thank you so much to each and every one of you. And everyone who's come up to say hi and everyone who sent me an email and everyone who sent a DM to say that they really feel part of this broader little family. And kudos to the boys from The Good, The Bad and The Rugby who came up with this absolutely crazy idea. Crazy. In the first place. Um, there is very good news for those of you like me who are, you know, um, who are rugby championship fans and who watch a bit of Southern Hemisphere rugby because there is something on the horizon done under. Uh, so keep listening because The Good, The Bad and The Rugby will be back in August with the warm-up games and there is going to be a whole new, I want to say branch to this family tree that is going to be absolutely stunning. So you heard Hello, it here Big old scoop right there, but I won't give away too much more. Um, I just want to say thank you um, to everyone here because I'm not from here as we always talk about this, but today, 38 years ago, South Africa won the 1995 Rugby World Cup final oh. uh, over New Zealand. And we had no business winning that. And it is the reason I do what I do today. Not because I like rugby so much, but because that day was the manifestation to the nine-year-old me that rugby could do so much more than just help people win a title. I watched some of the 95 footage this week at work. As you can tell, I get really choked up talking about this because I remember being nine and I remember, I remember South Africa pre that period really well as well. So I remember apartheid and I remember when it changed and how we didn't feel like one thing and then we saw that on TV and Nelson Mandela was there and it just really felt like there was so much more happening here than a team winning a game. And it's probably the reason I've gravitated to the women's game over everything else because it feels like there's so much more happening here than people winning a trophy and people winning medals and people winning titles. Because the girls that we've spoken to today who are seven and eight and nine years old in probably 38 years from now are gonna really feel, or 28 years from now, are gonna really feel the significance of the small little experiences they have at really crucial stages of their development. And seeing the way that someone like Sia Kulisi has influenced South Africa, his legacy will be so much bigger than having played rugby. He will have so much bigger impact than any of the things he's ever done on the pitch. And so many of the women that we meet on a weekly basis on the show give me that same sensation. Jodie Ounsley gave me that feeling that she will do so many more very impressive things than, than she's ever done on the pitch as a rugby player. And Scazzy is one of those people, and Mo is one of those people, and Katie Daly McLean is one of those people. And I feel like I genuinely am just surrounded by so much greatness. And it makes me very excited for the way that we will change how girls think about their space in the world in the next 10 years. So thank you for being here. <laughs> Alma Schmidt, everybody. <laughs> We've been the good, the scars, the rugby brought to you by Vodafone. This is a Folding Pocket production produced by, let's hear it for Shara, Shara Kilgallen. Kilgallen! Oh, Shara Kilgallen! Oh, Shara Kilgallen! Thank you very much for joining us. Let's have a drink and let's celebrate tonight. Goodbye. Woo!